Okay, hey everybody, or rather, hey, it's the four of us. Uh, so there's no one here in the classroom, and there's only a couple people online, and that's perfectly all right because. Uh, and uh, I just want to reiterate this here at the beginning. Uh, everybody's really tired, <laughs> and it's been a really rough uh, January. Here we are in February. We've hit week five of the course, um, and if there's any uh, night where you want a breather, I think a lot of people have. This would be the night. So uh, tonight. Um, there uh, really isn't any, there, there, there's very little new content. There won't be an assignment given tonight. Um, it is the last opportunity to do some pair programming. So if anyone hasn't done pair programming yet, we'll do some pair programming. Um, if anyone wants to do some more pair programming, we'll do some more pair programming. Uh, if, if we don't want to do any pair programming, fine. We can call it a, we can call it a day. Oops, there's Addison. Um, so, uh, so really, um, I'm not expecting that many people to actually attend live tonight, and that's perfectly fine. Um, and, and as far as uh, an agenda tonight, um, I thought I'd start off with Prime Minister's questions, if there's anything that uh, people have uh, on their minds as we enter into the, uh, the sort of the next third of the course. Um, and uh, then uh, I'm, I'm, tired of working, I'm tired of working on that student uh, project, and so I thought I would do a different code kata one having to do with code refactoring. So this one I think will be a little different than uh, some of the coding that you've seen me do before. Um, uh, I think that'd be kind of interesting. And uh, then again, if uh, you want, if you know, if we want to do some pair programming, we can do some pair programming here. There's another kata. Um, but but tonight uh, is really meant to uh, be something a little different, maybe a little palate cleanser before next week. And so then tell all your friends next week. That's the, that's the week that you want to be here in class. Uh, we're gonna. Um, Start looking at project five. Um, it's very different from the first four projects, and um, uh, and history shows that uh, because it's so different, because it's sort of a, a different a kind of program that you're building, uh, people need some extra time. There'll be lots of questions and stuff, so uh, you know, plan your time accordingly. So that's what we're doing tonight. So probably won't go until 9:30 uh, unless we really get into uh, really get into things. Um, so let's get started. Okay. Um, Prime Minister's questions. So uh, there's, uh, we've, let's see here, Project 3 was due tonight. The cones are uh, still ongoing and are due uh, next week. Um, what can I tell you? What, uh, what questions do you have about Project 3 or Project 4, if you started on that, on the cones? Um, anything you'd like me to know? Um, I have a question on Project Three, is it okay mm -hmm. if we create like a uh, another class for a project if we find it helpful that's not mentioned? Absolutely, that's right. Yeah, the the, the classes. Um, as a matter of fact, as far as your grade is concerned, it doesn't matter how many classes. I mean, technically, hey, if you wanted to do this all without creating a text parser class or something, yes, you could technically do that. Um. But no, actually, I mean, feel free. I actually, yeah, I encourage you. Maybe this is something I should have made a little bit more explicit. Um, to yes, please uh, create whatever classes you want. New, new exception classes, new helper classes. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't mean to restrict any of the the code that you write. Okay, thank you. Oh, and sorry, are we required to? Um, yes, we are, but. Is it a lot of points docked if we don't document all of the test functions? Well, actually, the test functions um, there, there's no requirement to have a Java doc on the test code, only on oh. the um, only on the source main. Uh, that, that's a good point. And you know what? That's probably not explicitly called out. Uh, would you mind sending me an email or an IM or something to remind me, and I'll I'll be sure to update the um, the, um, the 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 how to document your code. Uh, handout with it with that information. I'll do that. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. What else? How are people finding the project so far? I actually I was pleasantly surprised that on project three there weren't that many questions that came in. Um, I I assumed that was uh, just an indication of how well written the assignment was and everything was so straightforward. Right now. Um, what would people think of, of Project 3, and how did it compare to Project 2 in terms of um, difficulty or, or, or just interest? Did you find it as compelling, uh, less compelling? What would you think?
I feel like they're getting like easier overall in that I'm getting a lot more comfortable with the like development process and like knowing how long things will take and also just kind of the back and forth of doing unit testing and writing code and like with the first project I didn't have enough code coverage and I had to like figure out how to do that retroactively and that that hasn't been a mm -hmm. problem since then um so those things have gone a lot smoother for me excellent thank you for sharing those observations Addison how about others uh how are you finding uh the the code the course any sort of like big philosophical questions uh that you'd uh, like to discuss What is the meaning of life? No, nothing, nothing too deep. The answer is unit testing, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> oh, um, I think James said something he wanted to say. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, uh, James asked in chat, code coverage has been a challenge. Um, yes, um, and, and I'm guessing that, uh, that you're not doing test-driven development. And I think people have found that when uh you know you, you write some code and then you try to figure out oh how do i test this code it's hard to get that coverage and so then um you know what i encourage you to do is write your tests first uh even if they're you know, if you start with the integration tests um sort of saying hey you know when uh, when i do this on the command line what do i expect um and then from there as you're developing your code write uh write unit tests for your code And actually, and I was thinking about it, you know, project four, with project four, uh, you're basically adding a new um, XML parser and XML dumper. And so then perhaps uh, looking at your text parser and text dumper uh, unit tests um, and, uh, and the integration chat test might be a good, uh, might be a good source of inspiration. Oh, okay, yeah, James writes. You know, testing, uh, you test are relatively straightforward. It's writing multiple integration tests that's been challenging. Oh, interesting. Um, could, could you say more about uh, what specifically has been challenging? And here again, I'm looking for, you know, feedback of how I can better explain things in the course or maybe give better examples to students so that they can uh, become engaged more easily. Well, James is typing, um, if James is typing, um, what, what have been others' experiences with unit testing? I have kind of just not really focused on integration tests. I kind of write my main method more to be able to do unit testing. Um, it just makes more sense to me, and I have been able to do that more than the integration test. Um, for project three, I thought, I thought I was doing better with the TDD with project two, but project three kind of got on my nerves. I think it's because mm -hmm. we had changed up the structure of the arguments list. We added two more fields. Um, we also changed up the date, uh, the departure and the arrival to using date objects. And yep. so then, and then we implemented the get departure string and whatnot, but those little changes, um, although it's easy to do just to the code, it messes up all the unit tests and then <laughs> I had to go back and like figure out what was happening, what was wrong. And um, yeah, that that got a lot frustrating really quickly. But I also did a big refactor of my code again and um, mm. I added another helper class and it I like my code. I don't like the unit tests that I've written, though. Wow. That is a really great learning. Um, and, uh, you know, and, you know, actually, all those things you said, I've, I've had that happen to me many times in my career where, uh, you know, I realized that, I've, you know, oh, a new requirement comes in or, oh, there's something that uh, I, I thought worked one way or, you know, okay, really needs to work another way. And it's like, oh, I'm doing all those changes, updating the unit test and everything. Um, you know, I don't know a way around it, um, and so then uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're getting experience, uh, you know, a, a adapting to those changes. And uh, yes, it's kind of a pain to 
have to go back and, uh, you know, like when we add an extra argument or when we, uh, you know, change um, how the data is represented. Um, it's all part of the assignment, but it's, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it, it's meant to give you experience and an appreciation for, uh, you know, evolving your code over time as requirements change. Okay, excellent. Um, anything else that people would like um, to discuss? Let me know. Yeah. Something I was thinking about in testing um, was for your test classes, is it, does it make sense to write like, um, I'm not sure what the right words for this is, like static, members like for like flight tests or whatever um I might actually that's not a good example but like create because mm -hmm. I kept like creating the same flight over and over and over and then when I changed the time when I changed the time I had to go and individually kind of update things that in a fairly repetitive way um and then I realized it would probably have been better if I had just like created um one flight and called that over and over again uh, or something. Um, I was trying to remember if you'd done that. Uh, um, well, uh, it would be like a little bit like that, but but you know what? Yes, you're getting at something that, that's actually quite common. If you look at lots of examples of like from the JNIT documentation and things like that, um, they, uh, it, yes, you can, you know, store like an object that's under test in a field and then um, reference that same one. So you're not creating it over and over again. Um, I sort of see that as a stylistic thing, but, um, but it's something that's really quite common. So it's not something that I do very often, but it's something that is definitely done. Um, like if we look at what, uh, what I did for the, um, for the student, I had like all these like uh, factory methods that will create a student with a given name and then uh, you know, this way I only have a call to the student constructor in one place. So for, and I think we saw as it had some advantages. So for instance, you know, I think at one point, I don't remember what I had for the original gender, but as, um, you know, as uh, more functionally got implemented, I only had to change it in one place um, instead of, uh, you know, every place. And it's a trade-off. Um, uh, you know, sometimes I think it's more readable to actually just create the object there and configure it the way that you want instead of having a factory method to do that for you. Um, but it, it's really up to you. And, uh, I, you know, one of the nice things about IntelliJ, though, is that it does make it pretty easy to, like, refactor. You know, oh, I've got this duplicate code. Okay, it'll detect that. And when you refactor, you know, uh, the code into a method, it'll find other instances that can be replaced or other occurrences that can be placed, placed with the method. Um, but yeah, did that answer your question? Yeah, I guess that was, it was just one of those, I was thinking about it, I guess it was less of a, like. Yep. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. No, um, and I did that a little bit and then had some sort of like funny problems with readability where I was like, how do I fix this? I don't actually know what the, what this object is and why it's wrong. But um, well, another thing I wanted to ask about is um, IntelliJ was telling me that, um, I ended up doing my command line parsing by like checking for all of the options and then having a Boolean value be true if that option was present and then dealing with them all later. Mm -hmm. um, and IntelliJ kept telling me that all of them would always be true. No, oh, interesting. Which isn't true. Like I tested it. Yeah. And, and it's not like it did all those things if I didn't actually include all those options, but it was kind of freaking me out. I was like, why doesn't IntelliJ think this? Presumably yeah, it's, it's logic is pretty sound. right about those things. Interesting. Um, yeah. But when I actually did tests, it wasn't, you know, running the code for all the options. So I was confused about that. And I just can that maybe that's too detailed for this, but I was just no, confused yeah. how that was happening. You know what? Yeah, I mean, at first blush, I'm trying to think. In my experience, IntelliJ is like almost always right. Uh, it's you know, it's pretty scary. Um, yeah, I assumed it was my I mean, error at first, yeah. but I could not find it. Right, and if you wrote tests, I mean, I, I like the approach you take. Right? You know, write a test to demonstrate it, and trust the test more so than IntelliJ's analysis of the code. Um, well, is there a way to yeah, make I it mean, stopped? Because <laughs> it gives me so many warnings. Code. 
I know, right? Yeah, and, and I, I hate like super, and, Yeah. Um, if you want, uh, if, if you know, uh, send me a code pointer or something, you know, in, in your GitHub or or whatever, and I can take a look um, sometime okay. and give you some feedback. And um, yeah, see if it's something obvious to me where it's like, oh no, you know, hey, here's the code path, or what can be done differently. But uh, no, that's, that's that's cool. And thank you for paying attention to the warnings. You know, um, often oftentimes uh, people either you know ignore the warnings or uh, don't say, oh, well, this isn't a big deal, you know, nothing happened. Well, you know, IntelliJ is telling you that for a reason is because, you know, either the language, you know, you're doing something you didn't expect or you're doing something that will most likely, you know, cause a problem. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, thanks for, for looking into that. Um, let's see here. Oh, James uh, did post again. Uh, going back to the integration tests I wrote for Project 2, I found that I wasn't able to integrate the tests I wrote for different conditions. It seemed like the... EU PDX packages didn't allow for the tests I wanted to write. How interesting. Um, James, I wonder if that's something to do, was it something about like casting and like you had to, uh, like maybe you couldn't use the exact types of data that you wanted? And maybe it's something that you and I can follow up um, offline about too, because, uh, I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to there. Let's see here. And uh, Mina asked, uh, using resource files is still confusing. Um, Mina, would, would, you, would you mind saying some more about that in terms of um, where uh, where you're where where you're not yet comfortable using uh, resource files? Sorry, I was streaming. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I was able to. So I am now able to um, read my files when I have it in the resource, and I thought that I had figured out the resource files, but then when I was trying to test. I think it was my pretty printer mm -hmm. um, class. I was trying to write to a text file under the resources um, under test, and it wouldn't write to it, even though in the right. same block of test, I was able to read from a file in that mm -hmm. same folder. And so I just am not able to figure out why that's the case, because I can read from it, but I can't write, even though my writing, I. I know my pretty printer class works because I've tested it with like a file that's not in the resources and it all works. Um, it's just when I tell it to write into a file inside resource, it just won't write to it, but it can read from another file inside the same folder. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, yes. Um, and, and that is exactly the behavior that you should expect from resources. Um, Resources are read, <clears throat> excuse me, are read only by definition. Um, uh, the, the you know the, the primary use case for resources is some static um, content that you want in your application. So, for instance, uh, let's say, hey, <clears throat> like read me. It's a bunch of boilerplate text. You don't want to write all that boilerplate text into your source code. You don't want to recompile your source code every time you change a readme. It's in a file outside of it. However, you know you read the readme to display it, but you, the program itself doesn't modify the readme. Same oh. thing with, uh, let's say you had, uh, you were writing a, a, a graphical user interface um, or a web application, and you had something like an icon or an image, you know, a splash screen when it opens up, like I said, I think, I think software still has splash screens, right? Um, those kinds of those image files, those icons, that's all static content. You're not going to go in and edit it. And this is what the resource API is designed to do, to provide static read-only um, content that your program can use and then do something with. Okay. Well, but so, then, yep. mm -hmm. say I have a, a temp folder inside my resources just so that mm -hmm. I could delete stuff. Like everything in there I know is to delete. I'm able to put more files into that folder. Is that... Um, sorry, and by you are able, do you mean the program generates files that are written to it or that like 
you know, through IntelliJ, I'm able to add a new file to that resource, is that temporary? Yeah, file? no, so my test, um, it mm -hmm. has like a create a temp file and put it in here to make sure that this, this file name works. So then it puts it into this temp file to delete folder. Mm -hmm. um, and it's able, to, I, I can see that it is able to add files to it. Is that, can I not write to those files or? Um, no, not really. Um, because again, the resources, uh, let's see, I think when the test is run, I, I, it's, it, it, there is a file directory on disk, but when the, uh, but, but really the intent is that the, uh, the resource can come from anywhere. So for instance, uh, you know, when you're, when you build your jar file, um, and when you run the, com when you run the command line, you know, Java dash jar, and then you give it the jar file name. And it and the program reads the README. That README is a uh, is an entry in the jar file. It's not well. It is on disk, but it's not on a file on disk. It's an entry inside a jar file on disk. Um, conceptually, the resource could come from anywhere. You could have it. Uh, you you can load URLs as a resource, right? So you could uh, you know load things over you know over HTTP, or uh, you could read them out of a database. I suppose it's all abstract. And the contract of the resource API is that um, a resource has a name and then you can ask for a resource with that name and if it finds it, it'll return you an input stream. That input stream could read from anywhere. It could read from a file, it could read from the internet, it could read from a database, it could read from you know, some just socket over to a different, right? Um, all of that is abstracted for you. And so that, but that being said, clearly, right, you can see it there in IntelliJ, you can see it on your file system. You know, the readme file is uh, on a disk or um, for your, uh, for the test, um, you know, you have resources like, you know, inval or uh, val valid airline .txt, right? This is a file on a disk. Um, so, but, but however, uh, the intention is that this is a read only file as far as your program is concerned and can only be read. So, uh, so if we look at like the, the text parser test, um, I was going to give a couple of examples here of how to use the API and hopefully it's a little uh, more clear. So, you know, here there are, are two tests. And this is what comes out of the box, right? And, you know, hopefully you've all uh, augmented yours. Um, so valid text file can be parsed. And so you say get class, get resources as stream. It returns an input stream. Is it from a file? Is it from a data? Who knows, right? It, it doesn't matter, I guess is what I'm saying, um, as far as the resource API is concerned. And then you can, uh, you know, treat this input stream just like any other input stream. So it reads a bunch of bytes. And so then, uh, you know, what we then do is create a text parser from an input stream reader around the loaded resource, and we go from there. Um, same thing with this, you know, uh, we, we read an empty airline text file. We make sure that when we call parse, a parser exception is, is thrown. So this is the, the, the use case for having a read-only file. So you can imagine for project four, as a matter of fact, now you don't have to imagine, I think I, think I did it for you, um, XML parser test, no, somewhere here. Oh, maybe it's an XML helper. Here, you know what, I bet I did. Let's see here, we have invalid airline XML. Do I use this anywhere? Invalid airline, oh, here it is. Okay, airline XML helper test. So I have the same kind of thing here for a project four, where I have a, um, okay, yeah, right. So, so I read a, uh, I read this valid airline XML and I send it to the document builder parse method um, so that it demonstrates, yes, it can be parsed. And same thing, uh, you know, make sure that when we try to parse an invalid one, we get a sax parse exception. So in both these cases, you know, we're reading it as a stream. This is a read-only file. Now you also ask, and it's, it's a great question. It's like, well, wait a second. For my text dumper, I want to be able to, uh, you know, have it dump out some text um, someplace, and then I want to be able to make sure the right text was dumped. So here in text dumper test, I have a couple of examples of how to do that. Um, both of these create a new airline and dump it to some place. Now, uh, the, the text dumper, uh, the one that, uh, you know, the implementation that I provided takes a, a writer. So really any writer. So, um, you know, this writer, it can, it can write anywhere. It doesn't care what the destination is. 
This could be a writer that writes to a file, could write to a buffer of memory, could write to a socket, or, who cares, right? All it knows is that it's writing someplace. This is that program to the interface that I talk about in the lecture. So text dumper, um, here again, text dumper doesn't care. And as a matter of fact, in project five, you'll see where this comes in really handy. Um, uh, it doesn't care you know, where it writes it to. Then we look at the tests here. The first one takes an error line and dumps it to something called a string writer. Well, a string writer is an implementation of that writer interface um, that writes to a string in memory. And so what you can do is you can then write to the string in memory. You can get the string um, that it was written to, that the, uh, you know, that, that the, the thump, dumper wrote to, and then you can interrogate it by saying, aha, okay, does the, uh, you know, assert that the text that was written to contains the airline name, right? And so this, this, so here you are exercising the functionality of your text dumper by uh, writing to uh, a, 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 a buffer in memory, a string that's in memory. But, you know, you all wanna make sure that you can write it to a file also. And so that's where this can parse, a can parse text written by a text dumper, um, uh, test uses. So this will write to a file on disk. Now, um, and, and this is kind of a long way to get to the question that you, to answer the question that you asked, which is how do I write to a file? I mean, I want to write to a real file. It's a big part of the program. How do we do that? Um, and so then, uh, you know, you thought, oh, great, you know, I have this resource where I read stuff from. Can I write to there also? Well, no, because it's the resource API and we need to think of those as read only. However, a file is, you can write to it and you can read to it. Now, how, which file do I get? Well, JUnit 5 has this way of um, injecting, if you will, or providing the temp directory to a test. And so here in this parameter, when this uh, a method is invoked by the JUnit um, framework, the Jupyter framework for running the test, um, it says, oh, look, I've got a file that's annotated with that temp file. Great, I will give it a file object that represents, you know, slash temp or you know, bar slash whatever it is. It uh, doesn't matter, it's a, it's a temp file um, on, your, uh, on your machine, and that's a file. And now you can work with the file API. Say, hey, I am going to dump this to uh, a file in the temp directory called airline.txt. And now when I create my text dumper, I'll create a new, I'll send it a new file writer um, that, wrap, that wraps the text file. And now uh, that'll write to the file. And now I use a text parser to read from that same text file I get the airline that was read and I assert that they have the same name. So uh, th these are, uh, you know, so what, what I've just been talking about are the patterns that I think work well for um, testing uh, objects like the, the dumpers and the parsers that, um, uh, that uh, can, can write to any destination and this allow uh, read or write from any, uh, from any source or any destination. And this lets you uh, exercise the um, you, use, you use the resource API to uh, read in some expected data and see how your uh, text parse performs or write out um, some data and make sure that it, uh, that it matches what you expected. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Cool, okay, good deal. And um, this, is, this, is, uh, this is different stuff, right? And this is more sort of like, you know, application development. This isn't just a language. This isn't just, you know, oh, look, I'm writing a linked list. You know, this is new stuff. And it's something that's kind of specific to Java. And so, um, you know, don't be terribly concerned or worried that like, ah, oh, this is, you know, a little different because it is. It's stuff that you probably haven't seen before. Okay. Uh, question from Tway. Um, I had a switch case in my main method and my test cases covered all the cases, but Jacoco couldn't count those to the coverage. Oh, interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I've found that too, that sometimes Jococo, uh doesn't get it right. Ugh. I mean, it's super frustrating, right? Especially when you're at like that 73% coverage, you're so close. Um, hmm. Um, I don't know what to, to do there because it sounds like you've done the right thing, right? You have test cases that exercise all the branches. Um, and so, uh, oops, uh, Jococo didn't cover all of it. I am, I think I'm using the latest version of Jococo too. I upgraded it in the fall, so I mean, there's a newer one. Um, but as the Java language evolves, and the Java bytecode format evolves, Jococo needs to keep up. So uh, sorry about that. I hope you're able to add some more coverage elsewhere so that you could um, get the, uh, the minimum 75%.
Okay. People keep walking through the classroom. They're kind of as they as they walk by to go outside. They kind of look at me, tilt their head. It's like, oh, there's this guy just like talking to himself, uh, which I suppose isn't that unusual. But uh, anyway, any other questions before we move on? Okay. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, some people uh, joined a little after uh, 5.30, so one of the things I just want to reiterate before we go much further is that uh, if there's any uh, class this term where uh, that, that, that you're thinking about skipping, this should probably be it, because we're not going to, uh, we're not going to assign any new projects uh, this week. Um, there, while there's a, a, new, um, uh, a new screencast to watch and everything like that, um, otherwise, what we're doing right here and right now, um, honestly, isn't that impactful. This is uh, kind of a catch your breath week. So um, if for you, the best use of your time is to do something else, maybe, hey, catch up on your cones and maybe you didn't finish project three yet, go ahead and work on that, get a head start on project four, um, feel free to do that. Or, hey, go, you know, take a nap, uh, go take a walk, uh, you know, hang out with your, 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 your kids, do, you know, do what you need to do. Um, this is all going to be recorded. We're going to be doing some interesting stuff, though. Um, so let's, let me tell you what, what we'll be doing. Um, we're going to spend some time uh, doing uh, a, a, a kata where uh, I'm going to walk you through some code refactoring. And actually, let me, we could probably do this uh, together kind of collaboratively because I've never done this kata before. And um, I, think it'll be, uh, I think it'll be interesting. And, and it'll, it'll uh, get to explore some of the code refactorings uh, that maybe you've seen a little bit while I've been developing. But here we're taking existing code and, and improving it. Um, and so I, I think it'll be an interesting experience and worth staying around and participating in. Um, and then, uh, and actually, uh, maybe let's ask a question now. We, we do have uh, in pair, uh, in class pair programming, um, uh, Kata uh, lined up. Um, just, just show of hands. So if you could uh, in, uh, in, um, in, sorry, Zoom, uh, if you haven't participated in a pair programming session and need to, so and therefore you need to uh, participate in the pair programming tonight, could you please raise your hand? So if you were like, oh wow, this is like my 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 last chance to do pair programming, um, I need to be here. Yeah, I'm looking at the list. I think you've all done this before. Okay, cool. So I, I want to take that into account, um, because uh, you know we'll spend some time doing the. Uh, the refactoring, and we can decide where we want to invest our time tonight, whether we want to do it as pairing or we want to do this refactoring. Okay, excellent then. Let's dive into it. So, um, yeah, I'll leave the chat open down here. Um, uh, over the weekend, uh, actually, I don't know how I, maybe I saw something on Twitter or something, I'm not sure. Um, I was uh, reminded about uh, the, the work of um, Emily Beach. Um, Emily, I've seen her talk a couple of times. Uh, she is super cool. Um, she has all of this. And actually, let me let's see here. Uh, she is a, a software consultant. She does a lot of software teaching, and coaching. Um, and this is like, hey, how to write code um, and stuff like that. Uh, she's uh, Oh shoot, Swedish, Norwegian? I can't remember. Um, and uh, actually, let me, I'll, I'll just post this. Uh, so uh, I, um, she, she uh, has really uh, good um, practices. I was looking at her blog uh, and, and everything. Anyway, really cool person. Definitely recommend you check out her work. Um, uh, I, I, I found it to be um, very, uh, very precise and also very enlightening. So. Um, one of the things that she's uh, done um, is she has all of, if you look at her GitHub repositories, um, she has a whole bunch of uh, refactoring katas. And so the whole idea is that um, you know, the katas that we've been doing so far with the pair programming, we'll do the same thing with the mob programming, is that you start with a problem, you basically start from scratch, and you write a solution to it. And that's really great at exploring you know, how to solve the problems and everything like that. These refactoring katas, though, the whole idea is that there's already a solution out there and you need to make it better. Um, and, you know, I, I was just thinking about um, refactoring in the, uh, in the context of this course. And I'm like, you know, this is something that I've sort of talked about a little bit. We haven't done a lot of it. 
And um, I, I was telling you a story last week of how I was working uh, with, I was writing some code with a, a new intern that started in January at, at a tripwire. And, um, you know, and, and he was saying, like, wow, I've never seen this before. And I, I, I never, you know, I saw what the tools can do. And I didn't realize, you know, how much better you can make the code and stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I should do some of that with, um, with with the class here. So and then when, then when I looked at the schedule, I was like, I don't got any other content, so let's um, let's do this instead. So what I want to do uh, now is uh, work on a kata. So um, uh, Emily has uh, Emily Bache has a uh, ha has this gilded rose refactoring kata here in GitHub, and I forked it. And so now I've got my own fork of it. So a fork is uh, basically like a, you know a public copy. Of um, of a repo that's under my name that uh, is attached um, via uh, upstream dependency to the the original one, and I made I made my own fork so that I can change it, so that I can make changes here uh, without impacting uh, without impacting hers. Um, so let's uh, talk a little bit about this kata. So uh, this kata has been around for a while. Um, I appreciate the fact that uh, Emily. Um, yeah, here to read me calls out who the original author was, um, but she's gone through and um, taken the uh, you know the original solution and has uh, basically ported it into a whole bunch of different languages. She and uh, you know her friends, everything from like gosh Pascal to Erlang um, to Smalltalk. I mean, this is just crazy stuff. We'll be doing the Java one. Um, and the whole idea is that this kata is meant to give you experience working with legacy code um you know code that someone else has written that then uh you have to go in and modify and make sense of um and this is uh you know this, this, is, this is an essential skill of uh of a software developer um you know unless you're you know no one gets paid to uh only write new code from scratch because as soon as one line of code is written all of a sudden it's legacy code um, and so then as, uh, and, and sort of in the nature of the beast is that, hey, if you write code that is successful, um, it turns into legacy code because somebody is using it, right? And so then anything that is successful and therefore anything that needs to be maintained and augmented and optimized um, is legacy code. So, um, you know, this kind of gives you, uh, actually, I, I hope it gives a, a pretty good idea of what it's like to work with a legacy code with someone else's code, um, and uh, um, and uh, it, she gives you a starting place um, with some admittedly ugly code. Then uh, that 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 we need that our job is then to uh, is then to improve. So, um, what is this gilded rose kata all about? Um, oops. There's only, okay, here it is. So, and I'll, I'll paste this too if you want to read along at home. Um, so the whole idea is that uh, there is this small inn called the, the Gilded Rose. Um, and uh, it has some software to maintain its inventory of all of the, the, the knickknacks and odds and ends that are sold here at the, uh, at, at the Gilded Rose Inn. Um, and uh oh yes and so then uh the innkeeper his name is allison there's this guy uh named leroy that wrote the inventory system and guess what Re Re leroy doesn't work here anymore um and uh, lucky you, you you've been hired to uh add some new features to the inventory system um but here's how the here's how the system works and it's funny like you might read this and you're like, oh, wow, this is crazy. Uh, you know, no software could be like this messed up. And I'm looking at this as like, no, every piece of software is this messed up. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's a good kata. I'm looking forward to this. So um, you've got an item. And every item has a, uh, a sell in value, which is the number of days in which uh, you have to sell the item before it sort of goes bad. Um, all items have a quality value, which denotes how valuable the item is. Um, so basically, it gets its cost, and then um, every day the, uh, the the system basically recalculates the uh, the value based on its age. So at the end of the day, it's like oh you know you can you imagine like this is like you've got milk there it's on the shelf and okay the milk the, the value of the milk um, 
uh, you know, changes uh, as, as it gets older. Okay, so conceptually that's what every item has. But guess what, there are rules. There are, there's business logic um, for, for all of this. So once the sell date has passed, um, quality degrades twice as fast. So uh, you know your your your, the, your your milk might get a little uh, less uh, you know might might decline slightly over time, but then once the sell day is passed, oh it goes it goes downhill fast. Um, the quality of an item of an item never gets negative. Um, and then you've got special items like aged brie, which actually its quality goes up as it gets older, right? It ages, it becomes more ripe. It's it's a better product as it ages. I guess wine would probably be the same way. Um, and there's an upper bound on quality, and so then the, the quality of an item is never more than 50. There's also a special item uh, called uh, sulfurous, uh, which is legendary apparently. Um, uh, it, doesn't, it lives forever, it never has to be sold, it never decreases in quality, it always uh, stays um, at its initial quality level. Uh, there's also another category of things they sell this in. This is like the craziest in ever, right? They also sell backstage passes. Um, which uh, increase in quality over time um, until um, the sell, or, or rather increases as you get closer to that sell by date. So there, uh, the rules are the quality increases by two when there are 10 days or less, and by three every day when there are five days or less. But then as soon uh, as the concert happens, so basically when the sell by date uh, is reached, then it drops to zero. It's worthless, right? Backstage pass is useless once the band's already gone on to their next town, which is probably Cleveland or something, right? Okay. So, um, there are all these kind of funny rules here, and um, <laughs> again, this is the kind of stuff that actual software has to do. If you think about, you know, hey, maybe you, you know, you're, you're doing something like calculating something related to a bank account or an insurance policy or, um, you know, anything like that. Yep, there are rules uh, involved. Okay, and so then this is the way, this is what's implemented right now. Uh, Okay, so then well, the new functionality is the following. So now there is, uh, you know, hey, they have a new supplier, um, and uh, now you have a new type of item which are called conjured items, and they degrade in quality twice as fast as normal items. So you could have, I guess, like you know, uh, I don't know, let's see, milk or something, like conjured milk, um, which you created, and it's initially the quality is good as regular milk, but then it degrades twice as fast as normal items. So there's some logic here. There is an update quality method. Um, and so you can make any changes to that. You can also add a new code as long as everything still works correctly. However, there is a class called item. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, I guess it should be an apostrophe S. Yes. Um, so there's a class called item and uh, you can't change that because that code, oh, that code is owned by the goblin in the corner who will uh, like get really upset if you try to change it because he doesn't believe in uh, sharing code ownership. So uh, we can't change that, but you can change some other code. And again, this is kind of the way it's a nice work in real life where uh, you know, you've got some code that people just you know, refuse to touch. Um, so let's see here. Oh, and here's another thing. So uh, an item can never have its quality increase above 50. However, uh, sulfurous uh, is a legendary item and as such as quality is 80 and never alters. Oh my gosh, look at all of these rules. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay, I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm just going to keep this browser tab open because I think we're going to be going back to it quite a lot. Oh boy. Uh, I won't go to the code next, but all right, how are people doing so far? Does this look, sound like something that uh, we might want to explore tonight? Just trying to figure out how to work with code like this? Well, we'll dive in and see how it goes. Okay, so let's open IntelliJ. Oh, oh, by the way, there's a, a code checkout, and uh, I have it right here. There's a Java directory, and it's, oh, look, it's got Maven uh, to build uh, and everything. So let's look at the code. Let's see here. Did I? Yep, I've got it right here. Now, luckily, there isn't a lot of code here. Um, there is uh, there is the item class, and this is the thing we can't change, right? And it's like, oh man. It's super lame that like this code isn't uh, we, we you know it's something we can't change because there are some lame things here but it's what we have and so we'll have to live with it so okay and then okay there's gilded rose which has the update quality method and oh my gosh look at this code 
Look at all those if statements. Oh, what is this? this is like a 60 line method and a ton of ifs and a whole bunch of, okay, a whole bunch of uh, strings. And let's see here. It's got a unit test and I'm going to run the unit test. Oh, and oh, look, the unit test is broken. Oh, imagine that. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then it's got this thing called a text fixture, which. Okay, um, I'm just going to run it and see what happens. It prints out a bunch of stuff. It says, okay, it looks like it creates a bunch of items, creates a new gilded rose with those items. And it goes over two days, and every day it's, uh, it prints out what day you're in, and then a little table called comma separated list of the two string of all the items. And what was the items two string? Name, sell in, quality. Oh, okay, right. And sell in and quality probably change every day. Okay. Oh, right here at the end of the loop, it says update quality. Okay. Um, in chat. Okay, and, and so then let's see here. Uh, let's remind ourselves what we need to do. We need to continue to support all of this logic here, and we need to add support for this conjured item. Oh, boy. Okay, uh, any ideas of where we can start on this? Like, what should we do first? You know what I'm okay. Um, here's what I think I want to do first. I want to write some tests. I want to um, make sure. Yeah, I want to make sure that as I refactor the code, I don't break anything. So let's see here. So we've got this main method here, and it it actually goes through and exercises the behavior for all of these items. And so what I think I will do then is I basically want to run this code and make sure that the output as I refactor the code the output doesn't change. And, and this is a pretty common thing. It's here again, right? I've, I've, uh, I've inherited this code. I know very little about it. I barely understand the problem, but I know I got to get in there and fix some things. I got to make it better. Um, yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do that. So let's see here. I have this output right here, and uh, I want to. This is a main method, and so right. So okay, well it's a main method. So now I want to uh, write a test that runs my main method. And in order to do that, I want to have. Oh, I want to use my um, invoke main test case. So I'm going to make some changes. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to make a branch in my uh, my repository because I want to be able to use this again. So I'm just going to call this uh, winter 2022. Okay. And let's see here. I am then going to create uh, a new class. 
and I'm going to call it uh, invoke test test fixture. Really? That's a weird name. I think it's just a text fixture, t uh, test fixture. Um, test. Oh, I'm just going to call it test text fixture test. Yeesh. Say that one 27 times fast. Yes, please add that to GitHub or to Git. And I want this to extend my invoke main test case which I don't have here yet. Um, and so then that's one of my codes from, or my codes, yes, that's one of my classes from here. So I need to go modify the POM so that I can use that dependency. I will just copy it from the POM over here, I think. POM for the top level. Oh, I wonder if, No, I, I think I want to copy it from like airline um, examples. What is the what's the name of that dependency? Um, scope test. Here we go. J unit projects. I think this is what I want. I think I want this dependency right here. It's a test dependency on projects. And I'm pretty sure that's where invoke main is. I'll just go back to my other one here. I'll open the palm file. It just has this dependency there. I'll do that. I will refresh my Maven by clicking this thing. Does it find this yet? It does not. Maybe if I do a import class. Oh, good, it found it. Yay. Okay, so now I'm going to say, uh, let's see here, output of test text fixture uh, does not change. So I'm going to invoke main of the test test fixture. This, nope, this thing, oops. Hello? Ugh, come on, copy that, paste there, that class. Okay, I'm gonna invoke that main, and then I am going to, uh, well, let's just for, for right now, let's just say system out dot out to print line, result dot get code written to standard out. I think that, sh that, should, that should just print out that same thing down here. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a resource. Test Java source test uh, resource directory. So, oh, look at that. Resources, um, com gilded, gilded rows. Um, and then I want to mark this as a resources directory. Mark directory as test resources, nice. And now I'm going to create a file, which I'm going to call um, expected test test, no oh, sorry, text test fixture dot, I don't know, txt. And I am going to copy this there. And and now I am going to, I want to load that as a resource. I want to read it into a, uh, a string. Okay. So string expected equals read resource as string and the name of the resource is expected text test fixture fixture dot txt 
And then I'm going to say assert that text. Oh, I don't have assert that, and I bet I don't have. I need to import that one also. Um, oh, do I not have um, Hamcrest here? Uh, that's probably because I have Hamcrest here. Where do I get Hamcrest? Nope. Probably just get it from this parent artifact right here. I can probably put that into where's my palm? Palm, palm, palm. It does not have a parent. That's good. Now let's get that for a parent. I'm going to reload my Maven project. So basically, what I'm doing here is making it so that I can use code that I'm familiar with, like the invoke main and the and the Hamcrest APIs. Now I'm able to import that. I'm very glad. Um, equal to expected. So, you know, uh, oops, let me import that. Now, and here again, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm, I'm getting this code so that I can work with it. Because guess what? No one wrote tests for it, uh, or at least no one wrote good tests for it. Um, and uh, I've... Uh, you know, I, 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 and I want to be able to change it and then feel confident, though, that I didn't break anything. And the only way to do that, um, no matter how smart you think you are, is to write tests that prove it. Okay. So input stream uh, input equals get class dot get resources name is stream resource name. Um, that input not null value. And now we just need to read that into a string. So say string writer uh, SW equals new string writer. And then I actually want all of this in a try block. And oh, what the? Why isn't that, why is that unhappy? No. Nope, I don't want to have the method throw it. We'll fix that later. Um, and then let's see, we want a string writer, but we also want a uh, buffered reader, reader equal new input stream reader, Ooh, no, I'll do Buffered reader around a new input stream reader around input. Oops, nope. Input. Nice. And now let's see here. Uh, for string line equals reader. Reader dot read line while line. Not equals null line equals reader dot read line. W dot pen actually you want I want write uh, write line and write actually uh, yeah whatever um, write uh, new line character. There's probably a better way for me to do this. You think I know by now of what the uh, that there's an API for uh, copying lines of text from one source to another. If anyone wants to look that up for me, I would appreciate it. Um, and then I want to add that exception there, and let's just run this and see what happens. Didn't like it. Uh, see the difference? Probably the trailing. Okay, so what is this? The actual had an extra line. Okay, so I just need to add an extra line over there. One more line, maybe. Is that going to do it? Yay! Okay. So uh, I wrote my first test, and what this allowed me to do then is say, hey, listen, when uh, you know, you sort of run the run the program with this expected input, you get this output. Uh, now, I haven't changed any of the code yet, right? But this is exactly how I want to approach the problem because there's like all of this, um, you know, all of this stuff in there. 
um, that I really don't know about. So I'm going to do that and uh, I'm going to commit this code because it's working. So let's see here. Um, added a test to validate that nothing that the output of the uh, main method of test text uh, does not change as I modify the code under test. So that's a GitHub. Yep. Nice, that's up there. Um, okay, so this is just those two days. You know what? I, I want to test more days than this. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, I want to see what happens when, like, things go to, what is the value? Oh, shoot, I don't even remember. What, oh, yeah, selling and quality. So, like, here, the elixir of mongoose each day went down one more selling day and then one also went down in quality um i want to see what happens like when things go down to uh zero quality so let's see here it's like five days four days so i think if we did like 10 days it'd be interesting to see what happens so now what i want to do is I, i'm running more tests first and again um i had to learn the hard way that i gotta resist the urge i'm just gonna go in and refactor stuff because it's like no i might break things and when you're dealing with code that you're not familiar with, it's just really dangerous. You, you can just waste a whole bunch of time, um, you know, breaking something. And you're like, what did I change? I don't remember. Why did I change that? Oh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. So I like to spend some time just investing in some tests. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to um, I want to go back here. I want to make it so that I can do more than two days. Um, so here I'm going to change this. I, I think it's okay for me to change this. And to have days instead, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna break this up. I'm gonna say um, so basically, if I send in a command line argument, if there is uh, a, a command line argument, then uh, days equals integer dot percent arg zero. Um, so we're gonna take it on the command line. Otherwise, uh, days is gonna be two. Oops, by default. Nice, it's all happy now. Looks pretty happy. And now I'm going to add a new test, which is uh, let's say output of 10 days. 10 days of there's no change. Um, I'm just going to run it. I know it's going to fail because I need to update the, uh, the file. I'm just curious to see what it does. It might even throw an error for all I know. Uh, oops. Wait, what? That can't be right. Oh, because I didn't I didn't pass in the uh, the argument. Ten days. There you go. Cool. Let's look at the. Yep, oh, there's a lot more output there. So all that stuff at the beginning is the same, but here we go in day two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. So let's see here. I want all of this, and I'm going to put this into a new. Um, a new file here, and I'm going to say new file. I'm going to call it expected text test fixture 10 days. Nice. And now here, this is going to be 10 days. Oops. And I'm going to run this again. Okay, that one passes also. Okay, now I'm feeling a little bit more confident about refactoring. So I'm going to check this stuff in. Um, test uh, 10 days of uh, aging items. Well, actually, it's not test, it's validate. Uh, 10 days of aging items. Uh, that the output of 10 days in doesn't change. Okay. Now I want to start looking at this code. Oh my goodness. 
So um, we can't change item, but item has a name, selling, and quality. That's neat. Um, but we can change gilded rows, and presumably we can do all sorts of other things. Um, so I'll ask you, the audience at home, and put post something in chat. Uh, what opportunities do you see for making this code better? Uh, What don't you like about this code and how might we improve it? Um, I'm not quite sure I'm under like thinking about this right, but can you could you just um extend the item class and then make subclasses for the items that decrease in value over time and increase in value over time and sort of handle them all like separately that way. You know what? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking exactly the same thing. Um, now, right, and I'm pretty sure that's okay according to the rules. Uh, so let's see here. Make any changes to the update quality method or adding new code as long as everything still works correctly. Can't alter the item class or the item's property, but everything else is okay. Um, items property static. I don't know what that is. The yeah, items property static. Is there anything static in here? Nope. Okay, so I don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I totally agree with that. And um, you know, it, like you've got so well, you the, the you know we have all of this. Um, yeah, we have all of this. Uh, this logic here, all of these if statements, and I can't help but wonder if uh, yeah, that, that, that also pointed me to the fact that you've got like all of these different behaviors, and wouldn't it make more sense if this was implemented as a class hierarchy? Um, oh boy, how do we get started with that? Um, is, is the goal in a situation like this to actually like move around the code that already exists because it's not really that comp like it seems like it'd probably be faster to just like write it. You think so? well, uh maybe not. But like this no, looks I like mean, it's probably it, generally a lot of like sort of repetitive logic that's trying to account for the the different behaviors of the different items but um if you split it up into different classes and like it it's just very bulky code but not like super yeah complicated mm -hmm. code. Well, yeah right it's like oh if it's not this and it's not this oh and if it's this ah, i don't know i mean i i look at this and uh, you know i don't know I, i'm i'm probably too old or tired or lazy to really make sense of this um but yeah yeah. Yeah, I don't really like want to read it to see what it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, yeah, let's just sort of like. But but that might be the wrong. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I, I don't know. I've never done this before either. I don't have too much of a too much of a uh, of an idea. Oh boy! So if it's not Brie, then this is. Look at look at this. Wait a second. If I'm um, just looking at this loop here. So if it's not aged brie, otherwise, if less than fifty, and then now wait, where do we this Batman? Is this code ever going to be executed? Because look up here, it says if it's not aged brie, and so then presumably a backstage pass would go up here. As a matter of fact, we even oh wait oh and it's not a backstage pass. Like, right. This is why it's like it's so hard for me to read. Um, uh, okay, I, it seems like you, you know want to yeah. mm -hmm. update, you should update the things that increase in value in one block and things that decrease in value in another block, like at the very least, this is yeah. like intentionally painful. Well, right, the whole idea of <laughs> that. 
you know this is like really smelly code yeah yeah but like it seems like there's not a super easy way to just sort of like move some lines around like you... yeah right i don't know how many items are there is that somewhere you mean like types of items yeah is Let's there are there here. really just the two exceptions of concert tickets? Aged free, sulfurous, backstage passes, and then everything else, I think. And then you have the conjured items and I don't know. I don't know if like you can have conjured aged free. Is that how it works or is conjured something completely different? I think conjured are completely different. Yeah, because they're made by somebody else. What do you think, Asin? Oh, where does it show what which items actually like exist in this program? Yeah, yeah, in, in the main method. Let me go check. Yeah, no, no, that's good. Um, but yeah, I assume like hundred items or something separate. But if it says twice as fast there's like specific rules for how how fast things go bad right so yeah it would assume you already have a rule for it or imply you already have a rule for it oh like here's this plus five dexterity vest and so then presumably this is just sort of like the normal rule and then elixir of mongoose of the mongoose might also be sort of the normal so then you have the sulfurous rules or the backstage patches okay and then there's like kind of manic yeah oh and that's broken oh yeah here it is yeah it doesn't work properly yet oh interesting okay so this one will have to change you could just add another if clause for that one right oh <laughs> uh, you you really want to solve this don't you you just want to go in there and like ah, ugly code be damned uh well what? maybe good i was i was just joking because they yeah, did for the whole yeah. thing but I, I and you know what i completely understand because it's like you know and this, and this is the, the thing that you know professional developers have to struggle with every day is like oh shoot do i go through and sort of do the right thing by making the code nicer do i you know apply the campsite rule and go in and uh, okay. make the code you know nicer than the way i found it or like no damn it i just want to get it done uh because you know there's a customer you know we won't be able to support this this new you know, all these new content products I, I find the idea of having to work with other people's code the mm -hmm. most daunting thing. Um, it seems very unpleasant. Um, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So where to start? Maybe you should refactor the name of this class so that it's actually camel case. That's what, <laughs> yes. I, that's what I, I would that. do first. Yeah, that, that's driving me crazy. Um, text test fixture. Yes, thank you. I like that. Um, actually, let me let me run the Maven people. here. Maven W clean verify. Actually, I'll probably, I'll probably need to do a verify, but whatever. Make sure this works. And you'll probably another thing I would do is I would set up the uh, oops. Oh, that's right, because we have that stupid unit test failure. Uh, um, I, can, I can even like tell myself I want to yell at this code. It really, it really uh, offends me. So this isn't fix me. This is foo. Uh, and I am so I'm going to put this into uh, item name, <laughs> and I'm going to say this equals item name. Does that run now? Oh, and I was going to say I probably you know I also want to set up continuous integration for this, but not now. I want to focus in on uh, actually doing some refactoring. Okay, that works pretty well. Okay, so let's, uh, so we renamed that 
rename that and did we oh I didn't rename this uh, well, that's interesting usually it usually gets that right and then we want to rename yes we I want to rename I, it. I, I don't know this, this is sort of like hey, that's terrible <laughs> yeah actually test text and then match case. Oh, but it's only got one of them. Okay. And then I should probably rename the files also here. Um, how come it doesn't? Actually, it doesn't find it in the. It doesn't find this one. Did I get it backwards or something? Test text. Yes, I did. Yeah, I, I wonder if this is part of it because it's just terrible, right? Having the test and the text next to each other. Yeah. I'm gonna read. It's kind of fun in sort of a masochistic kind of way. Okay. Test text. Oh, you know, if I had renamed the file, it would have found the occurrence of it. Well, whatever. Test text. And let's just run all these. See if it works. That seems to work. Let's uh, let me verify here. And and by the way, this is what code refactoring is all about, right? You sort of sit there and polish things up and make it so that you can. It's also a great way to learn the code too, um, because you kind of start making it your own by refactoring it. So all of a sudden, you're building up the mental models, you're understanding uh, sort of you know what it's all about, and you're doing it very slowly. So in, I guess in some respects, it's kind of like it's the reverse of test driven development. You're still working in small chunks, but instead of creating code as you go, you're like you're refactoring the code as you go. Um, so, okay, let's do that. So yeah, rename the uh, dumb lack of camel case. <laughs> put that up there, yeah. Oops, please put that up there. Okay, now, um, here's what I think I want to do. Uh, so uh, here's what I'm thinking. Um, shoot, where to go? Okay, this one I'm not going to need anymore. I don't really like it that much. Um, I don't think I need the text files anymore. Sorry, where I'm looking at the this thing. I don't know. So what do you think? I I I, I kind of want to introduce subclasses of of item for these special cases that age differently, like Brie and the backstage passes. What do you all think about that? I think that is a good idea. That's a good idea? Yeah, I'll give that a try. Um, so is this, yeah. cla does this just, where is this invoked in the main, just at the beginning? Yeah, this is only invoked in the test. Oh, this actually. is main. Okay, I was. Yeah, yeah. And then it, I just, and it. Oh, hey, Madison, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, I was just stopping in the middle of the oh, sentence. Okay. Um, the, I, Watching you flip between windows is confusing me. I think <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. harder to watch someone. Yeah, else no, 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 no question. Computer. Um, but what is the like flow of this code? The flow. Good question. They so create, create all these items. items. Yeah. Makes a new gilded rose, and then it says, "Hey, I'm gonna we're, we're gonna basically age it so many days, and after every, so we have a bunch of eight days that we age, and then we're gonna go through each one of those and print out, hey, here as of day whatever." Here is the, you know, for every item, here's how many days are left before it expires, and here's what, it's, or it's sell-by date, and then here's what its quality is. And that, 
and then calls the two string method of of item which prints out the name oops the name the cell and the quality and then where is that update calls update quality oh okay. it's right here yeah it calls update quality right there and this is the thing with all the ugly logic Okay, I think I know where I want to take this next. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, all this items I stuff, that's just super obnoxious. Um, I am going to introduce a variable, all 34 occurrences, yes, I'm going to call it item. <laughs> okay, and now I am going to say, I'm going to replace this. Yeah, yeah, am I gonna do that? Uh, I was gonna I was gonna say let's have a method because let's see here. Yeah, this occurs up there and down there. So I'm gonna I was gonna have a method called is age debris. Just to make it more reasonable. Um no, it never, no, that's what I want. I want to replace that. And now, now I want to run my tests again. And presumably that didn't change anything. Because now what I want to do is I want to start using a subclass. And so then, um, where's the, going to put this over. I'm going to split screen it. So now instead of age debris, I'm going to call it new, well, age debris. <laughs> age debris. Um, and I don't want to give it a name because I think they all have the same name. I don't need to, all age debris has the same, uh, same name. So it's going to be Yep, put it in there, and it's going to be, oh crap, what were those things? Uh, um, I don't know. Because <laughs> again, right, this is what it's like dealing with someone else's code. It's like, I don't know any of the, the variables or anything. Let's see here. Um, cell in, and then quality. And so then super, and the name is going to be age free. It was there on my, uh, oh. Nice. Okay, and so I did that. Now, if I run it again, will I get the same thing? Nice. Okay, so. Oh, I wonder if I could do it that way. Okay, so now this is aged debris. And so now, uh, oops, I can go back over here here and now I want to implement oh interesting and then I want to implement uh, a different so I, I don't want to compare this I'm just going to say if item instance of age debris Everything's the same. Okay. But you know, ultimately, you know, ultimately what I want, ugh, is I want to say, you know, let's see here, that, 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 and so if it's not aged free and it's not that I have this change to the quality. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Quality is greater than zero, and it's not that. Is there a way to get IntelliJ to flip the if statement from a negative and like mm -hmm. turn it all? Yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't know why it's why you wouldn't check if it's age free. Then yeah. Yes, you can. Let me, check, let me just check this change in so that we can easily go back and see what's different. 
Um, so begin refactoring functionality into uh, the, 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 the aged Brie logic into own class. Now, uh, like, yeah, this one, invert if condition. Oh, I don't know if that helps. It might not, because it also it has put well, more in there, because it seems like you should be able to do if yeah. H3, do that, and then if it's a backstage pass, do that, and then, I mean, I don't know, though. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I don't know what all these ifs are actually doing in here. <laughs> totally, me neither, and, you know, I, I think I'm going to take a, a different tactic now, because ultimately what we want is this to just call a method on the you know, on age debris to say, update yourself, right? You know, you, you, basically, you know, right, uh, I think the, the, the tactic that I'm taking for, for this refactoring is instead of having all of this update quality logic in one place, um, you distribute it over, uh, over a number of different objects um, so that it, the logic is more localized. I, I think that's the, the tactic I'm gonna take. So ultimately, um, you know, I, I guess what I want to say is is I want to say if um, well, and I'm, I don't I actually you know what maybe I don't want to change this maybe I, I, we should do this with tests instead because you know what this logic is just messy I don't even know why I'm bothering to um, bothering to change it. So instead, what I should do is I should maybe just write tests that validate this, uh, you know, va validate the um, the update quality method versus a new method that I write on the object. So so now I'm going to create a uh, a new aged breed test. And here I want the test to be um, void, uh, same quality after, um, yeah, same quality after 10 days. And so what I want is the following. I'm going to create, um, What do I want? I want to have two aged debris objects. I want to say aged debris, which is uh, item equals new aged debris. And um, I guess we'll start with two and zero. And I'm going to have another one of those aged debris. I'm going to call it gilded rose. Because one of them I'm going to send to the uh, the Gilded Rose class to tell me what its quality should be, and I'm going to basically re-implement the logic inside the the aged debris method, and I'm going to use this test to make sure that the logic is the same. So new aged debris two zero, and actually we should keep these. We should put these in. Um, oops, we should put those in. Uh, replace all occurrences with selling, and then this is going to be replace all of those with quality cool so now i've got those two and now uh right so now uh i'm going to say i'm going to have a um yeah i'm just going to say four int day equals zero while day is less than 10 day plus plus i'm going to say uh after the following i'm going to, I'm going to get my uh oh no no okay okay so little rose item 
I'm going to create my gilded rows equals new gilded rows with a uh, new item with uh, just the gilded rows item. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to uh, I'm going to update the Gilded Rose, update quality there, and then I'm also going to update quality on my item in a new method over here on my age debris. And then I'm going to assert, uh, I'm going to assert that, let's see here, the name doesn't change, but I'm going to assert that uh, what I expect it to be is I'm oh, sorry, I expect that the item dot um, sell in is equal to the Gilded Rose item dot sell in. And then I'm going to assert, oops, and then equal to. So here again, what I'm doing is I'm creating tests to like um, just, you know, try to get my head around all of this stuff. So I'm gonna. So basically, what I'm saying is, I hey, no matter I, you know, when I use the logic, that hard coded, awful logic, what I'm trying to get rid of, I'm basically trying to replace. Um, in uh, in this one, with the other one. Okay, and this should fail immediately because I haven't implemented anything yet. Right, because it should have just failed right here off the first bat on day one actually um, failed on day zero. Oops, failed sell in on day zero. Failed quality. Quality on day one. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to duplicate the logic here in the gilded rows with this new method over here. So let's see here. Um, okay, so if it is not aged debris, then if the quality is less than 50, The quality goes up because it's age debris. Okay. So if uh, this dot quality uh, is less than 50, then this dot quality plus plus. If it is a backstage pass, no, otherwise that. Okay, so that's quality. So that's how we update quality. And then if it's not going to sell in. Okay, so if it's less than zero, if this dot sell in is less than zero, if it's not age debris, do that. If it is age debris, if item dot, if this dot quality, is less than 50 then this dot quality plus plus i think i'm translating that right but you know what i have a test to tell me whether or not i'm doing it correctly so it just does the same thing twice sorry say again well, oh it you're just, right it updates the quality twice oh hmm. but that's what it's doing over here oh shoot <laughs> what did i do wrong I don't know if you did do it wrong. When does sell in get decreased? Oh, here. Oh, if it does equal sulfur. Okay, so here is where we need to decrease it. Sell in minus minus. I forgot this. So if it's not, so in this case, it isn't sulfurous. Okay, so let's try that again. Oh my gosh, that worked. So, okay, that was for well, that was for 10 days. And so let's see if I, 
broke anything else by um, running my uh, my test fixture test. Does this still break? Okay, this is good. Um, okay, okay. So we, I basically what I just did here is I ripped out the logic from um, big ugly method and translated it over here. Now. I have got some duplicate code, so let's um, pull this out into a method, and let's see here. Uh, oops, let's do extra plus here. I'm just going to call this update quality. I'm going to call it increment quality. Interesting. Okay. Now let's call it increment quality. I want to yeah, I want to place both of those, make it a little bit easier to read. Okay, and then run this again. Interesting, 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 interesting. Okay, that's cool. Um, okay. You know, what I should probably also do is write some unit tests for this, but not now. Um, yeah, uh, you know what? Okay, so uh, I definitely should, and here's why. At some point, I just want to delete all that logic that's there in the gilded rows, and so I should probably, because uh, at, at some point this test is going to go away. So what I need to do then is I need to, uh, I guess, I need to verify um, this functionality, which was the description of aged debris, increases in quality as it gets older. So aged debris increases in quality as it gets older. So I have an aged debris, and it is uh, initially Let's see here, cell in, uh, well, let's just do two, zero. So initially it has quality, oops, initially it has zero quality. And then, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, so let's see here. And so uh, we, assert, after the Brie ages, um, we assert that, uh, the Brie dot quality is one. Oops, equal to one. Okay. Um, I think there's some other rules. Let's see here. All items have a cell in number of days. End of each day, our system lowers both values for every item. So let's see here. Um, oh, and then the quality can't exceed 50. So uh, I guess it's another thing. Oops. So uh, aged brie, you know, the quality, quality of aged brie cannot exceed 50. So we have we make an aged brie that starts off with like zero, but it has a life Oh interesting. Does it go negative? Yes, it is. If it goes negative, it still increases in quality. So if I guess if I start with zero, uh Okay, and then we update the quality, and then we assert that the uh, Brie dot quality equal to one, which is going to be true, right? And then we have to just do it a whole bunch more times to make sure that it never goes up to 50. Oh, no, wait, but actually it was two. Oh, sorry, what? What, what, what? 
the quality increments twice when you update the quality for the oh quality. right i i can't tell I, that must mean it's supposed to go up by no okay that's oh that's it's because it i think after yeah the, based on the day it ages it. out it gets a bonus mm -hmm. i think no Ooh. let's okay let, let's see what gilded rose does <laughs> because now i'm because well actually we well when it starts with zero um okay well, this one rule says that once the sell by date has passed, quality degrades twice as fast. Right, but not for Brie, right? Because quality actually goes up for but, Brie. Yeah, but it does appear to increase twice as fast. But I don't know if it's that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So let, let's see. Right now, I'm just trying to match what's there already because presumably, you know, Leroy had it right and no one's complained about it. So probably better to duplicate the existing functionality than try to make assumptions. Um, quality uh, at zero days so now it's basically going to be this thing but brie instead of brie update quality it's going to be new gilded rows of new item uh brie oops update quality okay so this one this is probably i, th I assume it's going to fail in the same way Yes, okay, so the right answer is two, or at least the old initial answer is two. Oh, that's so interesting, right? Because, I mean, like eventually what we're going to do here is we're going to re-implement all the functionality, and then we're going to get rid of that implementation of Guild Rose, and we'll kind of be on our own here. And so that's why I wonder if we should also be measuring, like, code coverage to make sure that all of our unit tests cover all the code. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be that useful. Okay, well, that's good to know. Um, oh, oh yeah, and then we need to finish writing this one. So it cannot see, exceed 50. So for, uh, so now we're gonna let 50 days go by. Yeah, it should still be 50. Um, ugh. and day equals one while day is less than or equal to 50, day plus plus. And now we're gonna say Brie update quality. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing all these uh, like refactoring the test to make them uh, easier. But anyway, uh, Brie update quality and then assert that um, Brie dot quality equal to fifty. This to 150. Does that still does that still max out? Yep. Okay. Okay. So I think this is the right logic here. Oops. Cool. Okay. Um, 7:13. How's everybody doing? Is is this compelling? And I guess the question is, do you want to do some more of this or would you like to do some pair programming? Um, uh, I'll think about that while I um, while I commit this stuff. Um, move the logic from uh, sorry um, from gilded rose gilded rose to aged debris. So uh, definitely time for a break. Um, but what do you? But okay, and it's like yeah, Addison to a. Uh, what what do you want to do? There's only a couple people left. Y'all both might have stepped away. Uh, no, I am here. Oh. I was just thinking. Okay. Um. This has been interesting. It's also like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. Um, and not, you know, not, not exactly fun. Um, it's 
it seems like everyone's gone. I know, right? So I think we got three <laughs> options. We can do more of this. We can do the pair program, or we can just be done. You know, I, mean, yeah. I, I sort of see where this is going. And and you're right. I mean, I think tedious sort of the thing. So I think it's like interesting for the person who's doing the kata, but watching someone do the kata, meh. Yeah, well, I mean, watching uh, you do refactoring is definitely helpful because I can do it on my own code because I know what I was trying to do. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I I personally am a little burned out from yeah, doing no, that right, totally. assignment for the last few days, and then we'll yeah, just... right. Okay. It gets mind numbing. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. And enough Java code. So I think we're good. Let's see here. So someone put something in chat. Two uh, A wants to see the refactoring. Okay. Well, hey, let's take. Uh, well, Two A, do you want to break? As it sounds like you're done. That's totally fine, right? Everybody else uh, bowed out, and there'll be the recording if, like, maybe maybe we have like some incredible breakthrough or whatever, and uh, or or whatever. But um. I think what I want to do is uh, my, my preference would be like soldier on for another 45 minutes or something and then at eight o'clock call it a night. Um, Chue, do you need a break or uh, do you just want to keep going for a little while longer? Chue is fine. Keep going. Okay. Addison, do what you want to do. Um, it'll be here on the recording. Uh, I appreciate you sticking around for this long and talking through some of this stuff with me and uh, I'll, I'll keep going for a little while longer, but then yeah, call it a night around eight o'clock. Okay, I think I'm gonna go, um, but okay. good night, Definitely. bye. Good night, thanks for coming, see you later. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, let's see what we got. So I'm looking at this code and there's a couple things I wanna, I don't know, I kinda wanna refactor this. So I wanna say uh, if the quality is less than, 50. So if, so actually I want to, I want to invert this. I want to, can I do that? Invert if condition, what does that say? Nah. Because what I'm thinking about here is that I'm sort of like, you know, I want to make a class hierarchy and there are like, there's a lot of the logic, which is, which is similar among among uh, among different classes. But maybe I should just sort of get stuff working and then refactor it later. Yeah, maybe I should just get stuff working and refactor it later. Okay. Um, yeah. So okay, so we did free um and actually you know what i i you know remember we did that refactoring of we added this is aged brie um and we changed it and now i'm thinking that wasn't terribly useful but no well, whatever because really i don't think we, i want to change this code at all until we basically replace it with going through each item and just calling its update um its update sorry it's increment sorry yes yeah, update quality method but let's try it with something else and see what we got Maybe we should say, um, maybe we should do backstage pass next. So let's, uh, let's see here. Is backstage pass. It's all over the place. This is good. Okay. So then, um, right. Okay. So now we have is backstage pass. And now I think we basically want the same kind of, we want very similar tests here. Um, we certainly want this, this test for both. Oops. We want this test for both class. And so now I'm starting to see that we're going to have some common code here, uh, but let's not, I guess let's not quite do that yet. So now let's take, make a test for backstage pass. Backstage pass test. In here, I basically want that same test, the same quality after 10 days, 
but I want it for the back backstage pass instead of aged Bree. So I'm going to replace aged Bree with backstage pass. Place all. Okay, and I'm going to create that class, and I'm going to create it in my source main Java. That's cool. Um, and now this is going to extend item, which do that. Oh, I didn't want that. I want to. Ugh. Create that constructor. And now I'm going to say super, and then, oh, I need that backstage pass big ugly string thing. I guess they all have that same, that all, all that same name. I don't know. No. Oh. It doesn't extend in, it doesn't extend item. Okay. Doesn't have an update quality method. Um, I'm gonna add that method to backstage pass because I can't change item. I'm gonna move that over to the right. Uh, move to opposite group over here so we can implement it. And now we're going to we're going to look at Gilded Rose to figure out what happens when you're a backstage pass. So if it's not it's an aged breed, it's not backstage pass, who cares? Otherwise, it's here. So now we're going to say uh, if item dot quality, oops, item is this dot quality, quality is less than 50. Uh, the quality goes up. If uh, if it is a backstage pass, great. So then, if this dot sell in is less than eleven, then if this if this dot quality is less than fifty, then this dot quality plus plus. If this dot sell in is less than six, and if this dot quality is less than fifty, this dot quality plus plus. Right. Okay. If the name isn't sell first, then we decrease the sell in minus minus. And then if sell in is less than zero, if it's not aged Brie, otherwise it gets a bonus. If the stock quality less than 50, then the stock quality plus plus. We've got, we've got this code all over the place. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's see if I duplicated it correctly. Put in zero, but was ten. So on day zero, it switches zero, but was ten. Ten. How did it get to be ten? Oh wait a second. What was the initial value of the uh, of the backstage pass? Does that matter? It might. Where was the uh, this test fixture thingy? There it is. What was the backstage pass? Fifteen twenty. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the test. There it is. Sell in fifteen. Quality of twenty. Yeah, 
interesting. Okay, so I don't, although, does that make a difference? It really shouldn't make a difference. So I think I've just got something wrong here. Oh, wait, that passed? Oh, I don't feel good about that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um that again, that doesn't make me feel terribly good. Um I am going to refactor this into its own method. Same quality after 10 days. And it takes those two selling because now I am I am just not feeling confident that I did that right. Because I, I had like some other stuff in there. So instead of 1510, I want 1049. 1049, I want 549. Is all that passed? Oh, it doesn't. Okay, good. Zero is 50. Here's another. Okay, good. I do have something bad in here on fill quality on day zero. Okay, and which one was this one? Uh, that was the last one, 549. So, and this was sell in. Oh, okay. So there must be something about so it's zero, but it was 50. Okay. So, oh, oh, okay. I didn't, right. I didn't implement the logic that says that it plummets. Want to zero after it expires. So I must have missed something in here. Ah, uh, yeah, I did down here. See, this is the great thing about testing, right? I, I'm, I'm able to sort of like figure things out and I can see it very quickly. I'm not trying to like, of course, I mean, I, don't know, I skipped over things, so maybe it's because I'm tired or whatever. But um, yeah. Okay. So here, if, uh, oh, wait a second. If it's not aged, Oh, no, 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 okay, I think I'm I'm wrong here. Uh, okay, I think I implemented this wrong. I implemented this logic wrong. If sell-in is less than zero, right here, if it's not age debris, which is not, if it's not a backstage path, otherwise it's zero. So if it is sell-in zero, then this stuff quality equals zero. Yay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Nice. So now we've got two of these things. Now I want to, okay, now we should probably, we should implement this, uh, we should add some more unit tests here. <laughs> okay. So, uh, right. So we should say test void. Um, this dot sell in. So let's see here. Um, so what, 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 okay. So it, Okay, well, yeah, what was that logic for backstage passes? Backstage passes, like HP increasing quality as someone approaches. Increases by two when there are 10 days left and by three when there are five days left. Okay, so quality increases by two when there are, well, when 10 days left. So here we want to have a backstage pass. Uh, pass equals new backstage pass of 10 days left. And let's say the quality is, okay, who cares? It's zero. And so then when this quality is updated, then we assert that the quality of the pass, no quality, um, is equal to two. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay, when actually, 
than 10 days left and really fewer than 10 days left. What was the other one? Quality by three when there are five days left. Quality increases by three when five days left. Yes, yes. When five days left. So now when there are only five days left, goes from zero to three. Oops, if I did three, but it was two. Oh, okay, I didn't change this. Five, yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 I'm just gonna run all of my tests because I haven't run the ones that do the main. Hey, everything still works, that's great. I'm going to hide all the ones that pass. Okay, now I want to refactor this. Um, actually, this looks just like the Brie one. So let's go, let's go from a Brie, what did I call that? Increment quality? Okay. So I call this whole thing increment quality. Replace that one, replace that one. And then, nice, okay. And then, yeah, increment to increment cell in. Cell is less than zero. Yeah, okay, nice. Okay, so let's run all my tests again. Okay, now I'm going to commit this. Now I'm going to, I'm going to refactor some of that uh, that item code. So move the logic regulator to backstage pass. Okay, so I look at backstage pass and I look at age Bree, and these are starting to look an awful lot alike. So both have that increment quality, both have like that spell in minus minus. Um, yeah. So yeah, okay. So I'm gonna refactor that common code into a superclass. So I'm gonna introduce a superclass of backstage pass, an item. What am I going to call, call it? I'd like to put in an item, but I can't change item. So I need another, I need like an adjective before item. What would be a good name of a class? Jeez, quality. Quality of an item number 150. It's all for legendary. Never has to be sold, never to increase in quality. I really want to call it. Oh, I can, okay, maybe I can call it. These are all non conjured items. Maybe I can just call it that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we can find a better name for it as things, uh, as things change. Okay, so here I want to introduce, I want to refactor, and I want to say uh, extract introduce super class, and I want to call it non-conjured item. And while I'm there, I want to, they all have an abstract update quality, and here I want to, I want to reuse that increment quality uses method, blah, which won't be accessible for some subclass. Well, fix that. Yeah, go do your refactoring thing. No. Uh, 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 no, no. 
Okay, so increment quality, I want that to be protected. And now I don't need the increment quality in the subclasses. Oh, good, I got rid of them. Okay, so that one looks pretty happy. What about age debris? This has increment quality. It doesn't need an increment quality, right? Oh, no, I didn't. This is non conjured item. Now it doesn't need this anymore because it inherits it from a superclass. What is it saying here? Missing the override. Well, please add the override annotation. Thank you very much. That one already has it. Okay, those look good. Now it's run the test again. See if everything passes. Yay. Okay, good. So you know, we're cleaning up the code. We're starting to put together our class hierarchy out of all of the um out of all this logic here. I mean it's just awful. Okay. Um and let's let's do that. Introduce a introduce a uh, shared superclass for non conjured items. Oh, and you know what? I probably should also refactor the tests because age debris tests, they both have the same. Well, I don't know. Eh, maybe we'll do that next. I don't know. Okay, so let's see here. What do we got? We got age debris. We got backstage pass. We've got sulfurous. Okay. There we go. Do the same thing here. I don't know if like this is is sulfurous is helpful. Or not. It is helpful to me. I don't know. I mean, ultimately, I suppose we're just going to delete all of this code anyway. All this code in Gilded Rose. Um, yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. So I'm going to make another non-conjured item, which is called sulfurous. So I'm going to write test for it. Yeah, this is where I'm seeing it's a lot of the same. I, this this whole thing right here, I think I want to um, pull up into a super class. I'm just going to introduce that, I guess. And now copy. I'll copy it again, and then I'll I'll introduce it here. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to create a new test for sulfurous. Uh, how do I spell the damn thing? Sulfurous. No, I spelled it wrong, didn't I? So, no, I guess it didn't. Okay, that's good. New Java class sulfurous test. Um, and then I will Copy the H3 test again for 10 days. And then do that. Uh, here, I don't want oh, I don't know, I said, uh, this. How do I create so first? I want an 80, a zero and an 80. Oh, interesting. I think I, okay, now I, I don't want the one from age three, I think I do want the one from backstage passes because it'll look more like that. And here I want the same quality after 10 days and then I want this thing. Copy lots of code, let's see here. Now I want to replace backstage pass with so, so for us. Place all. Really? No. Am I the wrong file? There aren't that many of them. Oh, I know why. Okay, wait a second. I changed this and I didn't need to. Yeah. Good. Now I want to replace just in this one file. I want. Place backstage pass with still first. I see the question. 
Yes, you can absolutely drop the Zoom. Thanks, Tway. I'll finish this off, and then I'll call it a night shortly. Have a good one. I'll see you next week. Place all four of those, and now we need to create this class. Create class built for us, and make it in the main. And then do that, add that constructor, all that good stuff. And of Ragnaros, no idea. Oh, and this extends um, the item. What is it called? Non hundred item. Super. This thing sell in quality. It's going to need a state quality method. Nice, nice, nice. This all works. Okay, so now if I run, it's going to fail miserably. Oh, okay, this isn't implemented yet. It's exactly what I expect. Okay, so now I need to move this over to the over here, and then I need to implement, I need to go off and figure out the Logic. Okay, so it is not Brie and it is not backstage pass. So here uh, we want to say if if the quality is greater than zero and it is not wait, it isn't it's not age Brie and it's not that. If that if it's not sulfurous minus one. So there is no there's nothing to do there. Okay, that's neat. Okay, so then this whole if statement is not interesting. If it is not sulfurous, decrease the cell in. Okay, if the cell in is less than zero, which actually is not, so like nothing happens here, right? I guess the whole idea with sulfurous is that nothing happens. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's kind of lame. Okay, um, let's run all the tests then. <laughs> okay, that was that was easy. But yes, I mean I suppose that is um, that is that is that, and probably then also um, oh, this isn't even the right test. The wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. Just just to be sure, zero and zero and eighty and minus one. Oops, minus one and eighty, and then that's not a thing. Let's try this again. Okay, do. Okay, uh, that's that's neat. Okay, so then uh, I guess let's do that, and then um, uh, other build a rose into sulfurous. Yep. And now let's refactor some of that test code because I'm really not. We have all this duplicate code right here, so let's see what we can do here. Um, Let's introduce a super class. Yeah, code refactor, extract, introduce super class. And we'll call this um, non conjuring item test. And I'm not going to move any methods quite yet because I'm not too sure what I want. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so it's really this code right here that I think is the thing that is, um, yeah. So we're just gonna call this thing quality, call it, call it quality after 10 days. And let's see here, the Gilda Rose item, this is always gonna be an item and then this is always going to be a non-conjured item. 
and now I want to move this. Actually, I want to move that up so I can just say refactor pull members up. Make that, yep, do not make it abstract. And then, oh, you know what, though? Um, I could do this. I could do this. I can say create non conjured object, create non conjured object, and have this to our place of occurrence. Yes. And then I want to return this not be a spell for us. I want to return this be a non conjured object, non conjured item. And uh, how interesting. Yeah, and then I'm going to pull this thing. I'm just going to inline those because, like, who cares? Inline or move? No, don't. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. And I want to inline the method. I want to inline the variable because then it's not going to complain about the that thing. And then, oops. And then here, I want to pull this one up also, refactor. Actually, sorry. Uh, yes, I want to pull that one up and make it abstract. Yes. I want to pull member up and make it abstract. Nice. And this is going to be a soul for us. Nice. Okay, so I can then get rid of those imports, I guess. I don't need them. So now if I run everything. Cool. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here is that now I can go and remove all the duplicate code, like an aged Brie. I don't need... Let's see here. Now my this all becomes well. First of all, I need to extend the non conjuring extends non conjured item test shoot non conjured ring. Oh, not conjured. It's conjure non conjured non conjured item test. And now I need to implement a method where I create the non-contured object, which will be a new Brie, return new Brie, aged Brie, by the selling and the quality. And now I can get rid of all of this and replace it with same quality, same quality after 10 days. Oops. Oh, did I not have one of those from so far? Oh, this one can also be pulled up. Yeah, that one can also be pulled up. Refactor, pull members up, do not make it abstract. And now here, same quality after 10 days, I've got one with a sell-in and a quality. And inline that, inline that. I think I've got this. Yay, all that passes still. Okay. Yeah, that'll eventually go away. Okay, cool. So, so basically what I'm doing here is I'm refactoring my tests, right? I'm just, I mean, like, this is so much nicer. There's so much less code here. And I can do the same thing with backstage pass by uh let's see here extends non conjure item test implement method and now return a new backstage pass oops backstage pass um fell in huh, you know quality probably refactor something a little bit more that's okay, same quality after 10 days, all of that. Yay, all this can go away. Nice. I just want to take one last look at. Oops. 
that non contract item just to make sure. Let's see here, Gilded Rose. Yeah, this is like this is pretty easy. Sweet. Okay, uh, let's run all the tests and see how it goes. Here, I just refactored all the tests, right? I don't think I even changed any of the um, the code under test, which is fine. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Well, so then let's see here, what time is it? 751, oh, let's, let's go for a little while longer then. Um, refactor test to eliminate duplicate code. Okay then. No, 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 no. Well, what is next? I've done. Oh, actually, you know what? I need to. Oh crap! Let's just be updating these over here. I think I was. So, so for us, and I don't need that anymore. The new. So for us. New backstage pass. Backstage first. Backstage first. Oh. Yeah. Well, I hope everything still works. Uh let's let's find out. I think it should. Oh it does. Okay, good. Okay, so now we've just got these two. Um, you know, although the thing I, you know, what I didn't add a. Um, uh, well, sorry, for the sulfurous. I think it says the same quality, but I didn't really implement the fact that um, quality never changes. So I think I need to. I need to verify that. Oops. Public void. Right. That was the whole thing about sulfurous. Legendary item never has to be sold and or decreases in quality. So um quality never changes. So um sulfurus. Sulfurus equals new sulfurus. And then uh sell in sure ten quality is just gonna be quality. And then create a local variable that the quality is a hundred and it should never change, right? For uh day equals int day equals zero while well, plus than a hundred and day um day plus plus. Insert that. So first dot quality equals to quality never changes. Yeah, interesting, the sell by never changes either, which I suppose I mean like minus one, yeah, sell by. Okay, or sell in. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So the test template keeps popping up. Nice. Okay, now we just need to do these other two. We look sort of the mongoose and the dexterity vest, which presumably are just like plain old. Well, I wonder if those are just old just conjured items. Interesting. Huh. Right, well, let's see. Okay, let's, let's change this. And, oops. Uh, let's see here. Use the uh, actual classes in the uh, test test fixture. Okay. 
Okay, we got one more of these. <laughs> and then we've got to, uh, I guess, implement the conjured mana cake. But okay, so then this thing becomes a conjured item. There's a non conjured item, I guess. Okay. Um, I mean, again, what the conjured item rules are. Let's see here. Uh, once the day has passed, the quality degrades twice as fast. The quality of an item is never negative. Each re increases quality of an item is never more than 50. Okay, well, let's just see what we do here. Okay, so uh, here we're just going to have, I guess we're just going to have a non conjured item test. Call this one non conjured item test case. And just say it because it's abstract, because now I'm going to have a non conjured item. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, make that a uh, non conjured item test case. Because now I'm going to have a non conjured item test. Non conjured item test. Extend non conjured item test case because I'm going to want that. And we're going to implement methods and we're going to say this is going to be, I think I, think I just want to say non conjured item over here. Oh, this is abstract. I guess I won't. Yeah, I guess I won't make that abstract after all. Okay, over here then I'm going to say return new non conjured item with uh the name. Oh wow, this has to have a name, doesn't it? Well, I don't really care what the name is in the test. Non conjured. And then the uh sell in and the quality. Okay, and then, uh, oh, right, I don't have need the test. Um, and then, what am I calling, I calling those? Same quality after 100 days. And here in, let's go to 1020. And twenty and then five seven. And then I'm going to change this to a non conjured item. I'm going to change this to a non conjured item. Yeah. Okay, so now if I run this, I assume it'll blow up or something. Yeah, okay, because it's nine, but was 10, because something's not being decremented. Okay, great, okay. So I've got the test there, and now I want to go find my gilded rose, and now, okay, so now I want to go back to my non conjured item, and implement update quality. So, okay, if item is not aged green, it's not a backstage pass, if quality is greater than zero decrement it, which is true, which is what I want to do here. If this stuck quality is greater than zero, then this stuck quality minus minus. Otherwise, yeah. Okay, so nothing special. We're not incrementing quality like on all the fancy ones. If it's not sell first, which is not, this dot sell in minus minus. Okay. Uh, if this dot sell in 
is less than zero. If it's not age free and it's not a backstage and the quality is greater than zero and if it's not so okay this is where it is okay so if this stuck quality is greater than zero this stuck quality minus minus why keep putting spaces after that and i think that's it right yeah wow well, logic is so confusing else if okay well that's neat <laughs> that worked okay um okay so now uh, let's see here this is um I'm kind of glad that I saved this one for the end, actually, because I'm the most familiar with the code, and this is kind of like the, the normal or the degenerate case or whatever. So let's see here. Void. Um, what is this one? Oh, once the cell day is passed, quality degrades twice as fast. Let's see. Once the cell day is passed, do I have that? Um... Oops, that's the wrong going place. Uh, I want to test case. I want to code to item test. Yeah, I guess this one will will go negative. So that's good. Oops. Uh, uh, okay, so then quality. Okay, once the day has passed, quality degrades twice as fast. Okay, uh, quality degrades twice as fast after sell by. Okay, so if we have a non conjured item, equal, actually, let's create non conjured item with the cell in. The cell in zero and the quality is two, then I expect that item dot update quality after I update the quality then it should be zero. Assert that item dot quality equal to zero. I wonder if I don't Okay. You know, okay, so one of the questions that I have is as as quality keeps uh, sorry, um you know, I I I at very shortly I'm going to like totally blow away my implementation of um of of the gilded rose update quality method. And I'm kind of worried cuz it's like, oh wow, once I lose that old implementation, will my test, you know, uh will my test coverage be good enough? And then it occurred to me that because I have that test the main method, I think that basically is a good enough test to codify all the functionality that was there in the old implementation. So now I'm not so worried about that. So, okay, so, and that's where I think I'm gonna finish off tonight because I'm already at eight o'clock. Um, so uh, what did I do here? I implemented, um, okay, uh, put the, oh, implemented the defaults. Um, oh, I didn't run the test yet, did I? Didn't run all of them. Okay, good. Everything still works. Yes. Okay, nice. Okay. Okay. Well, so this is okay. This is this is, this is all right. I think. Oh, interesting. Huh. Okay. Um, yeah, the default non conjured item. My messages keep getting worse and worse as the night goes on. 
I realize that there's also some duplicate code right here, which is the same as call it decrement quality. Decrement quality. And as a matter of fact, I mean, this one doesn't use increment quality, so that's interesting. Uh, so this, is, this is a good exercise in naming, and I'm not very good at naming this time of night. Because, like, really, there's no reason for this method to be here. So, I mean, what do I call it? A normal item, and the other one is a. What's the. It's like sort of like a regular item. So I call it like a regular item and then like a uh let, let's see silver says legendary. That's an adjective. Um increase in quality. So you basically have increase in quality items and you have regular items. Interesting, 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 interesting. So like you have one set of items that's like monotonically decreasing and then you have, right? It's like, ah, uh, maybe there isn't a common super class other than item. Well, there's a little bit of like the increment quality is, is some common functionality, but decrement only applies to this non-conjured item. Oh boy. Okay. So let's see here. Um, I think I need to do some refactoring to get the names of these better. Um, Hmm. Maybe. No, let, let's uh, let's save that for after this. So let's see here. Uh, refactored duplicate code into its own method. Okay. So let's see here. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of silly. I have this like method that isn't used here, and yeah, this probably all should have been. I'll just, I'll just change some stuff in the class hierarchy. But first, let's look at Gilded Rose. Now let's totally, um, oh, so I think now, I think now that I am ready to delete all of this and instead replace all of this, get rid of all of this awful, awful, awful code and just say, um, this will be a non-conjured item. And I will cast that. And now I say item dot update quality. And I think now I've and so I can get rid of all of this stuff. So this doesn't need to know about oops, I just delete all this. My deleting code feels so good, especially if it's gonna work. Oh damn. <laughs> oh no, I the main method should not throw exit. Oh class cast cast exception. Oh right, it's got that other okay, fair enough. Um, uh, okay, so I guess I do need to implement the uh, the new thing first before I can do this. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Well, do I? Yeah, meh, 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 meh. yeah what's, the, what's the rules for the new thing? Conjured items degrade in quality twice as fast as normal items. Okay. Oh, normal items. So maybe that's what we should call all of these. Is this normal? Yeah, okay. Great. Okay. So never mind. I am going to uh, revert this change. Now I have a, okay. Oh, and it, uh, revert all the changes. Sorry. But oh gosh, I'm so glad I have like IntelliJ to handle all this for me, make sure everything still works. Okay. And by the way, that died because uh, that failed because of this item right here. So I shouldn't be, you know, instantiating them directly. So this will be, okay, so not non-conjured. I want these to be called normal items instead. And normal items, okay, everybody's got an update quality method. Okay, so non-conjured items. Okay, I'm just gonna like rename a whole bunch of things here. Um, oops. And, Right, 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 right. Update quality. So this will just be a normal item, but then I want to decrement the quality down. Okay, so I want to, what do I want to do? I mean, this class is so simple. Um, 
Okay, I am going to go back to the way non-conjured item was before, but I don't want to call it non-conjured though. I want to call it You know what, boy, I'm just going to be lame. I'm just going to call it abstract item. And then um, do some refactoring from there. Abstract item extent item. Uh, excuse me. Yes, I think, well, no, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And no, thank you. I don't want to refactor that. Okay, abstract item. And now I want to have a subclass of this, which is called normal item, but that is what I'm going to change this. non conjured item test case. This one stays the same. It creates an abstract item now, that's good. Now I want to look at the subclasses. I want to go to non conjured item test. I'm going to call this one a normal item test. A normal item test. And then oh, actually non non conjured item test case. I'm going to change this to be abstract item test case. Okay, so here is uh, the normal. And so now over here, I then I need to have this one instead of being an abstract item. This is going to be a normal item. Which doesn't exist yet, right? Yes, it does not. Um, And I'm going to create that class over my main. And uh, name, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to call this name sell in quality. And here is where I'm going to have this implementation of update quality. And uh, that and here, okay, now it's time to make this thing abstract. Protected abstract. Actually, I said it's not protected, it's public. And I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to make that, that, and I'm going to make this thing abstract. Nice. Update quality. What is it? What is it talking about here? Overwritten methods, not no worries. Okay, we'll have to do that then. Those are not abstract items, those are now normal items. Normal items, okay, I'm kind of losing track of where I'm at here. Uh, abstract item, yeah, we need to fix that. Oh, baby, that's much nicer. Okay, now, okay, this is good. So abstract items, they all have the increment quality, and I really need to then introduce a subclass of of this and push it down so what do we so they're all normal so all the ones that are that have like the increment and stuff we call them abnormal interesting perhaps sure okay um well, what do i have a refactoring if i say push members down i want to um I want to push down increment quality, but let's see if I preview it. Encode classes. Yeah, okay. I don't want to put them all in the four. I want to introduce a new subclass, which then. Oh, I want all four of those to inherit from the, um, the abnormal <laughs> item. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, so now I'm just making a class hierarchy here, right? So now I guess I need to uh, extract, you can't, there's a subclass, no, 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 okay. Over here, I then wanna create a new class called <laughs> abnormal <laughs> item. And then this thing is gonna extend abstract item, oops. Uh, abstract item and it is going to be abstract itself and it is going to have okay, sorry I'm super sure 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 
And then this is where I'm going to put the increment quality method. And now all of the, the self forest and all those other people. Yes. Um, yeah, aged Brie now is going to be abnormal. Abnormal item. Yeah, it's happier now. This guy is now going to be abnormal item. Okay, so now, you know, I'm, I'm making a. Oh, should I have something else? Shouldn't the sulfurous? Maybe, well, maybe, maybe sulfurous doesn't need to. Let's look at sulfurous. Oh. Oh, no, it doesn't need to. Okay, so it's um, it can still be abstract, even though I guess it kind of is abnormal. Um, oh, interesting. Well, so maybe abnormal isn't the right word for it. I don't know. Nice. Okay, so now, oh boy, lots of refactoring, uh, lots of renaming and uh, creating a class hierarchy. Okay. Okay, and everything passed, right? I did run everything, didn't I? Yay, okay, nice. Okay, and finally, I got to add the new one in. What was the new one? It was the... Okay, so it's this thing. This is a conjured item. Okay, now I need to add a conjured item here. Now, what's the deal with the conjured items? Um, I'm going to add a test for it. Now it's actually like brand new code. Oh boy, and here it is at the end. And I'm kind of tired, I gotta admit. Conjured item test. This will be, well, this one actually, I'm not gonna, I mean, the current Gilded Rose implementation doesn't have this, right? It doesn't, doesn't do the right thing. So I'm gonna have to make it do the right thing, which means I need to write real tests for it, which means I need to understand his behavior again. So his behavior, Conjured items, degrade in quality twice as fast as normal items. Uh, degrade in quality twice as fast as normal. And this will be a conjured item, conjured item, item equals new conjured item, which doesn't exist yet. Great class in main and this will be an abstract item actually it'll be a normal item um certain matter super one related problem probably because right okay so the quality is twice as fast as normal so um so in oops uh, oh, name, who cares? Conjured. Fell in. Um, hmm. Do I really care how many does sell in days? And the quality is, is going to initially be. Let's see here. Well, if it's two, then I should expect it to be zero when it, when it goes down. Right. So item update quality and then assert that after one day item dot quality equals zero oops equal to zero now i do this all the time if you can tell you to figure it out okay so yep Okay, so zero but was one. This is exactly what we expect. So then conjured item. Um, we don't need to change update quality, but we do need to, oh wait, normal item. Oh, I bet in normal item, decrement quality is private. Let's make it protected. And then,
I don't know. I don't know if this is good or not. Oops. That's the test. That's all I wanted. Turn two. So let me test again. Okay, test results. Okay, and now, now though, if I make this be a conjured item, it's going to fail. I run all of them. Really? That's still passed? I don't understand why. Oh, because I don't call the update method. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we go back one last time. I am almost done. I'm getting exhausted. Now if we delete all this stuff, we'll see that it will fail and I'll need to update it. I'm done. Okay. I'll uh, fix it later. You can look at it. I'm out of here. Thanks, everybody, for if anybody watched at all. Uh, I will see you next time. Bye.